Uh, the purpose for, for which this project was designed is to use video technology and test its effectiveness in improving smallholder farmers' ability to learn and adopt push pull primarily, and to be able to communicate their own ideas on its adaptation in sorghum and millet farming systems and using Western Kenya as a pilot. We are very keen in this project to link into the CCRP and the regional uh, COP so that we can not only link into the regional uh, COP but also benefit from results, scientific results hitherto and the best practices uh, from the other projects. And we hope at the end of this project we'll be able to, con to contribute uh, to that body of knowledge. The smallholder farmers in sub-Saharan Africa and pretty much in Western Kenya uh, are constrained by both biotic and abiotic constraints. Primarily striga weeds, tremboras, and lo lost soil fertility, water stress, and degraded <coughs> soils. And as a result, they have significant yield losses and increasing crop failures. And this is getting worse with the advent of climate change. And this results into very high, level of, high levels of food insecurity, malnutrition, and poverty. Uh, we are keen to increase yields, to ensure household nutrition, and improvement of household incomes uh, in the, among these farmers. Uh, if we bring it closer home, how do we intend to tackle this problem? And again, this is where we have commonality with the McKnight Foundation, that we recognize the need to intensify agriculture, but to intensify it sustainably. Uh, not just intensified for the sake of being very highly technical or mechanized, but sustainably in the context of the farmer. The extension delivery system's weaknesses have slowed down the adoption rates. Uh, Push-pull has been very highly successful in maize-based farming systems, and we've had preliminary investigations on whether it can work in sorghum and millets and even upland rice, which are all threatened by striga. And we think this is a good opportunity to use this project to see how farmers learn and if they can effectively use video technology to not only learn push-pull as it is, but it's also its adaptation uh, to work in uh, millet and uh, sorghum-based farming systems. What's new about this is that not only will we use a new technology, like video, that is documentary video, but we'll also use participatory video where the farmer's own perspective captures what the technology is and in their own linguistic context transfer this technology to the other farmers. What we've learned from what we've done so far is that farmer-to-farmer -farmer communication is what works best, is what's most sustainable. If Mr. John Notier explains the integration of push-pull and dairy goat farming to another farmer. That farmer will empathize more with him. Actually, he'll move very rapidly from merely perceiving this integration to actually conceiving it, owning it, because he's seen John doing it. And farmer-to-farmer -farmer communication to us uh, is a big winner. Before I enter into this uh, type of farming, this technology, <coughs> I was really suffering. I was suffering because I could not manage to get enough food for my people. Uh, when I worked in a three acres of my land, is when I prepared probably something, but not enough. In one acre, I could only get two sacks of 90 kg. But after entering into this technology, and you will hear from what I'm going to say, I'm now getting uh, 16 bags from one acre. I'm now getting seven bags extra that I'm now selling. And it's now is getting me income. But what it is now remaining, is how communication can reach people. Because we have been trying to go to Chief Parasas where so many people are not going. You find all the clan elders, but they cannot pass the message to all farmers. 
So what is now remaining? If they can, we can make it in a video so that sometimes it is seen there. They see me talking to farmers. They will take a certificate. Mm. So we really appreciate that. This technology, uh, I'll say it's beneficial to me and my farmers. Uh, we have a new competition, and I'm seeing this change almost every <laughs> So we shall also fight the climate change. Because uh, this new technology I just bring to assist us in this special technology of this video, I'm seeing it will challenge us, we farmer teachers and we farmer field schools. To me, I'm seeing it will challenge us. Because, for example, when I come from Vega, when just this, let me say, for example, when this is a meeting or a parasa, and somebody comes there with a digital camera, people feel that they have seen something very interesting. And supposing we take this to farmers, it will, better, it, will, it will pick up faster than the way we used to with the farmer field school. I'm seeing the rate of farmers will increase because of this. Farmers, when they see things practical, for example, when they are taking photos in this video, and they see it immediately, it, to them is very miracles, especially in my area. So I'm seeing this technology, and I'm supporting it. And I'm saying, let us not just not talk of it, let us implement it. I came to know, or to join hands with the ECP, was the year 2006 when I happened to uh, to attend a field day. From the year 2006, ACP did train the 20 farmer teachers, and on the same year, at, uh, November, we opened the 20 farmer field school groups dealing with uh, push pool. And the issues of uh, the video camera and the digital cameras, that, that was the world we were looking for. And when, uh, for this forum, I say thank you very much. We just pray that uh, this world, uh, it happens so. There was a point I wanted to, uh, to say. In our farmer field schools, I have 245. And it happened that uh, Mr. Jimmy came with the people of uh, the magazine. It happened that one of field school uh, happened to appear on the magazine, Kenya magazine. It forced every member to photocopy that page. <laughs> Whenever he goes, he first shows or she shows that picture, that here am I. Mm -hmm. And these are the issues that are in field school. Yeah. That one interested and interested. We opened five more field schools, each of that members times five. <laughs> so it added a lot of marks to us. So we feel uh, the creation to come once again. Uh, what I would just also like to add on is that we have very small pieces of land. And we are, as you know, we are in the Periaban. We are almost, we are never in the city. So many people have come now to settle around the city and our area, the place where they are targeting what to settle. So that also has made us now to mean with small things. And in order to get proper, I mean, production which can keep us going, we shall have to intensify a lot of work on those small pieces of land we have. And, uh, it is only the Kuskul technology that can come up with that solution. Because in the Kuskul technology, you can use a smaller <coughs> plant and get a higher yield. See? At the same time, the Kuskul technology is friendly. Both it is friendly to livestock keeping, it is friendly to the, even to the soil of the field itself. As the technology, and now you are told that we are going back to sorghum, <coughs> millet, these are so friendly, and varieties. And now, even in the market, the sorghum and the millet is selling higher than maize. <laughs> And uh, many people have gone back to the, we call it the red, <laughs> the red word, <laughs> the red <Yes>. red. <laughs> yeah, so many people are using that, even in schools. What they are using, the police they are using is made of millets and even soccer. you see. So we as farmers, we are happy that uh, the sorghum and millets <coughs> are coming with the food from 
and the entire system. When I go back to the video, video uh, assisting the farmers in learning, uh, it is a really just what our friends have done or have, or have said. I remember there is a book like it was uh, uh, printed about the impact of the DPPT in Western Kenya. And some of members of my farm has appeared in that picture. Now they were saying, oh, so, you see, so this is your picture, yes. Oh, and then where did you take it? Just here. Don't you see that tree? Oh, no, this tree. <laughs> <laughs> so they have come to learn that really what I'm doing eh, uh, has now been noted. And it is, uh, in that group, it is permanently there. Even my grandson come to see that when your father was when I'm, when your grandfather was still on this world, mm. he used to <laughs> yeah. and increase the the food uh, the food situation. But once they will be seeing those things in practice, yeah, no. they will see really this is what really Mr. Swanson was doing at that time. And then it will make them say that it is not only the technology is not specially for a certain thing. All people can practice it because they will see it in an aged lady who has succeeded. Just in the rearing is one and one animal there, and they are seeing. They say this is Mama So and So. So I'm saying that the technology should be should be made a reality. Why possible? Where I come from is uh, is a valley. Now we have it. Most of you have read it from the book. When I heard of postal technology, I embraced the technology on that early. I started sharing the ideas also with my community because the land is there, but you cannot produce now because of the problem I just mentioned. There was the problem with tiger, the stem borer. And we realized that through this technology, the tiger won't be there, the stem borer won't be there. So anybody who would like to adopt that technology, so we started in the year 2000 to get small plots, uh, 10 by 10. Before the postal technology came into practice, what you were getting in the farm, because I did a bit of agriculture at school, so I could undertake some crop husbandry and the local practice as well as required, I could only manage three bags per acre. What am I now getting at the moment? I'm getting 24 bucks. And you can see I'm now very close to sustain my 12 people who are depending on me. Now, what we now need as farmers is also to move in the world. The world is now changing. Yeah? I've mentioned it earlier. If there's this technology of now talking with video, yeah? now you don't have a lot of impact on us as farmers. That kind of documentation is also very, very important. <coughs> you have to document whatever farmers are doing there. So when you present, it will consume a very little time, but you try to show a lot of things <coughs> at a go. So me, I really support the technology which are becoming. I really support the, the program on this program. I did mention that these are traditional food crops. Let us not call them more fun. The moment call them more fun, people run away from them. <coughs> these are very, very important. And if you embrace them, we are going to be food <coughs> Because I can remember in my community, those who planted the sorghum, they are not buying food. But who planted the mess, what happened? No mess. It really moved very fast. Huh? And even our family, huh? Wakina Mama, please allow me to give an example. Wakina Mama, they use mess very fast <laughs> to sell. But sorghum, to take a process, huh? to take a process. So it is food, it is sustainable yeah, in our community.